What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we are here to talk about a Rumble tier list. This is something that a lot of people have been asking for since the start of the 8th anniversary. People have been wanting to see this for a while and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now in today's video we're only talking about the offensive, the attack teams. We are not talking about defensive teams because they can vary way more than attack teams. I feel like the attack teams are pretty much set in stone in terms of what are the best units you can run and what give you the best chance at success. Whereas defense teams, it's hard to gauge how good or bad a defense team because we don't know how often your team is being attacked and stuff. So I can't really recommend a good defense team to you guys, but we can talk about what is good offensively and what I've seen through personal experience and what I personally think is going to be the best teams to be using in Pirate Rumble. Now remember, this video is all my personal experience. You may have a different experience, so you can let people know down below in the comment section. But also want to give a big shout out to the OPTC Pirate Rumble Team Builder website, which is a subsidiary of the Treasure Cruise database, I believe. So I'll leave a link to this down below in the video description as well. You can go ahead and check it out, and we'll, we'll have a look at how this tool actually works in a moment. But let's go ahead and get started in this list. So this first one that we're going to be talking about is the, the lowest of the rung here, which is just anything that is like driven or powerhouse related. Uh, I'm not really going to be filling out all of these slots here for this particular team because, I mean, this one also can vary quite a lot. But in my opinion, driven and powerhouse are not a good team to run. Most class-based teams are actually pretty bad right now in Rumble. Color-based teams is the way to go as they have the most support going for them. Until we get more Pirate Rumble rare recruits and other legends that are solely focused on classes rather than color these class teams are just not going to cope um, and that's the thing with driven and powerhouses while you know on paper they seem okay the main issue is is that wano law it just really destroys these teams honestly and a lot of color teams just have so much synergy that they can just overpower or they can tank all the hits from driven and powerhouse teams and it really doesn't matter i have made videos in the past using driven and powerhouse teams and i have come away from those videos being very underwhelmed so my advice to you guys is to not build driven and powerhouse teams currently in pirate rumble so the next team that I have here is going to be a slasher based team. So I just want to give you guys a bit of a rundown as to what I have here. The top row here is just the Sugo Fest exclusive characters that typically work well in a slasher team. Whereas the bottom row are your Pyre Rumble rare recruits and other miscellaneous characters that also somewhat work in these teams. So the top row, main, these are the main ones you want to have. If you don't have Roger Whitebeard, Odin, Dofi, and Borsalino, you can forget a slasher team. While there are other teams you can work with, these core four units are, are the ones that you will mainly see in a slasher team cracker wano law and shanks crew they see somewhat usage i mean even dog storm to an extent um, but that's the thing with slashes is they are so offensively focused that they don't have a lot of defense so they, look at their ct like that's level 15 ct with these units on the front row that's actually cracked and the thing is is while that is good they have a lot of power roger and whitebeard when they launch their special it basically is going to almost guarantee you a knockout on two of the enemies which is ridiculous targeting everyone for a 30% health cut and then damage through defense. We know how powerful that is. And then you've got like Odin with the CT increase and huge damage. Dovi can do decent damage. Borsalino launches so so frequently and Cracker also for additional CT. This team is focused on damage. And the thing is, is if you do run a team with five legends on the front, you basically have no bench. You don't have enough space in terms of team cost. So that's the other thing with slashes is like these units, these Power Rumble Rare Recruits, while they're okay, their passives are so focused in their colors that they're not going to be that good or that useful on a slasher team so until we get more pvp rare recruits that are solely focused on the slasher class unfortunately i think that this team definitely falls short but because of how powerful some of the characters are here i do definitely think there are places where this team has its uses the next team that we have here is just a free spirit team. Now, some people may be shocked that I have this team so low, but there is one glaring issue that free spirit teams currently have is that you basically just run like five legends to have the best shot at being able to kill the enemy. And the thing is, is once these characters go down, you're pretty much screwed. And these teams don't have like the best defense in the world. I mean, if we just hypothetically launch all of our specials to get all of these buffs active, the offense is very good. I mean, 50 attack is nothing to scoff at. Health is great. Speed is great. CT doesn't really provide that much. I mean, Luffy, his rumble ability does provide buffs to strength and dex allies. But that's the thing. A lot of these characters here are not strength or dex. And a lot of them are dual units, which means they don't have a color, which is not that great. But the characters by themselves on paper are good. If you are able to get... 
Luffy to launch first, get all of your characters hasted to the top of the order, and then they can launch their specials. In a lot of cases, you're just going to win. But if you get the opposite end, where all of the characters have already launched, some of them have a chance to whiff as well. And then you have Luffy to launch, where they all go to the top of the order, and if they've already launched all their specials, it gives your opponent more opportunity to charge their specials and hit back at you. And this is just something that I've seen with the Free Spirit team. Currently, they are fine, but I don't think they're a very reliable team moving forward, as there are definitely some holes defensively in this squad. And in terms of like PvP rev recruits, again, these are just characters that are solely really focused on colors, specifically Law and Rebecca. Otama does have buffs and CT increases for both Fighter and Free Spirit, which is kind of interesting. Otama herself, you can use her on the front line. She gives you additional CT, which is pretty good. She has a healing special on a relatively low CT, which is kind of nice. But realistically, this team is, is fine and acceptable and can definitely take on just about anything in the game. But it's just too inconsistent for my liking to be ranked super high. So the next team here is going to be the Int Attack Team. So remember, these characters you see here are going to be different from a defensive team because you'd be running one of your running characters like Kumurasaki, Reiju, Perona to debuff and heal your characters. Those are not typically characters that you would use in in in, in just an attack team, right? Um, do note that this Yamato is supposed to be the Int Yamato, but it's not on the uh, Rumble Team Builder, unfortunately. But do note if this is the other Yamato, the Int one, you know this that character is very very good on an attack team. And, I mean, this is also kind of like an issue that the Int team kind of has, is that they don't have like a lot of heavy hitters. While you have like your Rogue, who can hit hard, but he only really does the damage to Psy enemies. And of course, if you are building a Psy team, or an Int team, should I say, you typically are building to take on other Psy teams. I mean, you can definitely build them to take on various of different teams in the game but typically you use it to build to take on other opposing side teams yamato obviously hits really hard and the half stats is great obviously mori does that as well uh, versus white bit is an option probably not the best offensive option but he's okay katakuri if you are really focused on taking on side teams katakuri is actually pretty decent and then pudding is kind of like a utility legend nothing too crazy though the rumble units are very good for int though they have a vast array of good units i mean dory and broggy i wouldn't really suggest running dory but if you have Broggy, him by himself is fine. But if you have them together, oh my god. These two units are just beastly. They're, they're legitimately crazy good together. Smoker, another top tier PvP rare recruit character. And then Omen Konus are kind of built to take on other side teams. And Sengoku is a pretty decent option. He has a lot of bulkiness going on. And I know, as I said, you know, Reiju and Perona and characters like that are really good defensively. Sengoku is also another good defensive unit. Here's an option as well, just to allow you to get more tanky. I suppose, but realistically, like these other three rare recruits here, Smoker, Dory, and Broggy, if you have them, plus some of the legends in the top row, yeah, it's going to be a pretty decent in team. The next team that I think is actually really good though, is this one right here, the Quick Team. This team has gone over a few changes as time has progressed. Obviously, we had like the initial team with Magellan, Akainu, and Kaido. That core together, and then like PvP Shiryu. That core was basically carrying and defeating basically anything at the time. But uh, obviously, that team got a lot weaker over time as other colors got better units. And now we have like a resurgence with Izo Okiku and Legend Brook, for example. Groggy Monsters, Corazon. We have some really nice options for Quick now. Just have a look at these base stats across the board here. That's with these. These five units passives active i mean you can switch out luffy for like shiryu for example which can allow you to get some ct increase as well the the stats are super balanced you got a kaido for health cut and huge damage kaido can reduce defense Izo okiku makes the strength fight a joke they are ridiculously good and brook I i'm a big fan of this brook character i've been using him over magellan on my teams and even though he himself does not do damage the fact that he can 100 haste three of your quick allies is so good uh, i think luffy is still as a solid option. I mean, like, Legend King, I know, is also one that people often use. Tezora and Cracker, they're fine, but, I mean, if you have, you know, Shiryu, I think it'll be fine in a lot of cases anyway. And as I said, Groggy Monsters, they're actually a really solid unit. Uh, they do a lot of heavy damage. You could even use them on the front line if you wanted to do that because they provide so much damage. Whitebeard's still one of the best late game nukers. Corazon is a solid option and definitely helps you with the strength fight if you are struggling with it. Definitely Corazon helps a lot. And Bellamy is a solid option too. Definitely one of those units you want on the front line to get some very, very quick health cuts. And while I think this team is actually quite exceptional, the thing is, is that there are still situations where this team can lose to a strength team because... Uh, 
you know, Final Tap Kid is a character and he is ridiculously powerful and there are still opportunities for him to knock out your team. So while I do absolutely love this team and it will win 99% of times against strength teams, there are still those opportunities that you can still lose. So the next team here is a dex based team now i think a lot of people are going to be surprised that i have the dex team so high but after using luffy alongside some of these other characters you see here this team just does not lose to quick teams and remember this is the team that you would normally use against a quick enemy based team and as i said this team just doesn't lose luffy is an incredible addition to the team because even if one of them gets knocked out well luffy can just revive them which is great so these are some of the sugo fest exclusives you may be wanting to think about i think definitely the first three if you have the first three you're already in a very good position borsalino is a nice addition he just continuously buffs you every time he launches his special really low ct as well zora and doflamingo are two of the options that you have for late game nukas but at the same time remember you can only have four well if you want some pvp rare recruits on your team you can only have four four legends and then four pvp rare recruits to to construct that team um so you may want to be careful in terms of what you're picking luchi is a good option if you don't have like one of these other characters at the front he just hits really hard does defense down he reminds me a lot of quick kaido in pvp very very similar kit in terms of his special and then rayleigh is an okay option not the best but it's an option and then for pyro rumble rare recruits they i mean dex has some really good pvp rare recruits as well i mean sober mask we all know how good he is definitely one of the characters you want as the last character on your team because when he hits and the timer is really low he hits really hard moria is one of the characters that i often use on my front line because of his special it does defense down and then does an additional defense down to any uh quick allies so he does a total of level eight defense down and then he does a huge amount of damage and obviously a great synergy with the rest of the crew here Dol Dalton, I don't personally own, but I really want to get because he has a great kit that works very well with this Dex team. And Cavendish is also a really solid option. He does a really good amount of damage to a single target character with low defense. So in a lot of chances, he'll get a lot of damage off on that one character. So Dex, I think, is one of the best attack teams currently in Rumble, so long as you have some of those key elements, such as like Luffy, Cat, and Dog. Those three, even Borsalino, is such a good option. And then you've got uh, some very good options for PvP Rare Recruits. So the second team that I have on the list is going to be the strength team, and I don't really think it's much of a surprise to many people out there. The strength team is so, so good, especially with the additions of the waifu character. I'm a big fan of this unit. I think they have an incredibly powerful special. Their rumble ability is also pretty good too to help out your team. But the main thing about the strength team, obviously you focus on using this team against enemy dex teams. And so many of these units have great rumble abilities that can just straight up debuff dex altogether. Specifically, Specifically, Toki, her rumble ability gives uh, level 5 defense down to Dex, and then Kaku, this guy, look at his rumble ability for the first 40 seconds, level 6 CT down to Dex, and also level 2 defense down to all enemies that are Dex. So you've got like level 7 defense down with just Kaku and Toki together, and level 6 CT down as well. Those two together make it so, so good. Um, you've also got the Arlong character with his rumble ability, which can inflict speed down if you want to use him as well so the fact that you just naturally have just this affinity to just debuff the, the the main team you're going up against just innately for free is really good and then if you stack on final tap kids so any of those dex teams that are pretty pesky that have really bulky defenses kid says hell no we're going through this and we're killing you so kid is a fantastic option if you don't have kid it's not the end of the world but it makes a huge difference if you have him for sure waifus we've already touched up on odin hits really hard ace also hits really hard jack is also a pretty solid option if you don't have some of these extremely hard hitters having characters like odin or, or like ace alongside jack where jack can just provide you with really good health cuts or on a low ct and then you've also got your hard hitters to then hit after the health cuts have gone through kuma is another character that can do damage through defense and same as with doflamingo though these characters are less desirable compared to kid because he's just got a better special compared to those characters and as we said strength have amazing pvp rev recruits with arlong and kaku just straight up debuffing decks and doing pretty good damage by themselves as well crack is a solid option law solid as sanji and kobe aren't the best options um if you have kobe best to have him as the final character on your team to get the most out of him and sanji you can use him on the front line if you have him he's not the best option if you've got some of the the ones that are above him definitely are better choices but man strength is an incredible team that does not lose very often towards the dex teams 
And then we get to my own personal favorite team in Pirate Rumble currently, which is the Psy Free Spirit hybrid style team. And I guess we can also include the Psy team in this as well, because I mean, characters like Kuzan, Eneru, Jerma, while they aren't Free Spirit, you can still build a very good Psy team with those characters. And I mean, Rebecca and Toy Soldier with their Rumble ability, six attack, two defense, five HP, all the time to your Psy characters. And then they also do defense down with their special. They do pretty good damage to two targets. Smoothie, a great bench unit. And then you got Gaban who can hit hard. Kalgara and Oland are okay, but a little bit less desirable. But then obviously you have the very hard hitters of the Psy Free Spirit core of Odin and Yamato. Those two together are just, oh my God, they're just way too good. If you can get Odin to hit a vast majority of the enemy, it is just over because while he does hit really hard, he buffs his own attack or he buffs free spirit characters attack level seven for 20 seconds. So that works for the whole team. That's incredible. And then you also have the ability of doing really good damage, 3.5 attack, large sideways range. And then even if you don't kill them, 70% chance to action bind all enemies in the large sideways range for 10 seconds. So even though you hit really hard, even if they don't die, you can still action bind them. And if you do action bind like three or four enemies, it's just over. It's a wrap. I mean, you got Yamato to halve the enemy's uh, stats altogether, which means not only do you hit harder, but you can tank more more hits. Roger is a solid option. Definitely, you know, getting a little bit outpaced these days, but still a very solid option. He does good debuffs. He can hit all enemies, which is great. Luffy, Luffy and the Straw Hats, or just Straw Hats in general, they're okay. Um, I definitely think just, just these four in general, these four, and then Rebecca on the front line, it just, just send it. <laughs> it's just so good. And the thing about this team and why I really love this, team is because of Wano Law and I talked about him when we talked about the very first team of this video and the thing about him is for the first 40 seconds inflict level 6 CT down guard down and speed down to both driven and powerhouse just it's just way too good the fact that this team can just take on a vast majority of other teams because they have a lot of you know, driven or powerhouse characters is the reason why this team is so good i mean if you look at the int team normally a lot of them are driven or powerhouse the quick team a lot of them are driven or powerhouse and even in the strength team there's a, there's a fair few uh, driven characters in there as well just due to that, uh, this team can counter a vast majority of teams in the meta. While they can't beat everything, and there are still going to be times where they just get straight up KO'd by a lot of stuff, this is such a consistent team. It's my go-to team for almost all teams. I absolutely love it, and I still think that it is currently the best team in Pirate Rumble. So... That's my opinion on this. I absolutely adore this team. And like these other characters on the side, you can just build mono side team if you want. But having Odin for the free spirit, you know, synergy, especially with Rebecca Toy Soldier also being free spirit, it's just incredible how good this team is. And with that, that is going to wrap up this video today. I really hope that this video helped you guys out in terms of giving you guys my opinion, conveying my opinion on what I think are the best offensive teams to be using currently in Pirate Rumble. So I really hope you guys did enjoy this one today. And uh, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.